our weekly segment, TikTok, when we interview some of our favorite creators on the platform, getting a closer look at the story behind the sensation. And to kick off Black History Month, throughout the month of February, we'll be celebrating talented black creators who have made an impact throughout the TikTok community by using the hashtag BlackTikTok to amplify black voices in the community. Our first guest is Letitia Key, a feminist artist and activist from the Ivory Coast, using her hair to share a powerful message with her six million followers. Letitia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, well, it is our pleasure. And as you know, millions of people watch your videos. You even have one that has surpassed 54 million views. Uh, you rose to fame, of course, for your intricate gravity-defying hair sculptures. What got you thinking, I'm going to use my hair and turn it into art? So it's, I started about six years ago. And it's after I saw an amazing photo album of women, of African women prior to colonization. So those were type of black and white photo, very ancient. And those women were, were wearing incredible air sculpture. And I was like, how can you do that with hair? Mm -hmm. And since I'm a little girl, I'm kind of gift with braiding and doing hair. So... Seeing those pictures, seeing those images really inspired me to try to do some experiment with my hair. So you said that you started experimenting. How did you go from the very basics of braiding into these complex designs? So I started braiding maybe when I was five. I was looking around me, my auntie, my mama, when she, when they were braiding hair, I was I was passionate about it. So I was watching and trying to reproduce on, on my dolls, on my little sisters, on everyone around, around me that were willing to give it a head to try. So since I'm a very little child, I, I bred. When I saw how the air was standing tall on the head, I tried thinking about what tool can I use to make my hair stand also. I tried to use wire. That's what I immediately think of wire to, to try to make my hair flexible. So wire is the key ingredient there. And of course, you have a book coming out in April, and it really details your journey to self-love and embracing your black beauty and your African roots. Tell us how you got to that point and, and how your hair played such a significant role. So since I'm a little child, I was always relaxed my hair. I mean, when I was a child, everyone around me were relaxing their hair. It was the norm. Maybe my first relaxer, it was when I was five. And you can't blame parents because no one knew it was dangerous. So I grew up always relaxing my hair and thinking my natural hair wasn't beautiful enough. So my hair was very weak over the time, but like I still was loving it. And... After an accident where I I wear some very tight braiding, I, f I lost all my hair in the front of my, on my on my face. And yeah, it was very traumatizing. I have to say that I was looking for a way to make my hair grow again. And I was like on YouTube all the time. And that's where I discovered the, the Black American natural community. And I was like in awe. I was like 15, 15 or 16. And it was the first time of my life that I was, I was seeing women that look like me embracing natural air. For me, it wasn't even an option because no one around me was letting the natural air grow. I started to appreciate other parts of me. The fact, the fact that I'm a very dark-skinned Black woman, because even if I live in, a, in an Ivorian country, in an African Black country, the consequence with colonization make that we, we have Western standard of beauty. Mm. I mean, light-skinned women are the standard here. So when I start, when I start to appreciate my hair, I start to appreciate my skin. I start to appreciate the fact that I'm a woman. Quite an evolution from your edges missing. Um, it, it, what a transformation yes. that that we're seeing now. And of course, you're also very passionate about social justice issues and matters that affect women, such as anti-abortion laws, even going as far as shaping your hair into fallopian tubes. What do you hope that viewers will take away from your message? So uh, at the beginning, when I, I started shaping my hair, um, it was just for fun. There, I, I wasn't talking about any, any type of social justice with it. Every time I was posting, I had more, more, more like more comments, more, more shares. So I really start to see that okay, maybe people really appreciate that. But 
at a certain moment, I start uh, receiving message from black women, especially saying that what I was doing with my hair, we weren't even trying, was helping them to love themselves a little more, was helping them to love their hair a little more. So that's where I start to, to realize that if I try to really put an intention behind what I'm doing, it can really make a change. It can really make a difference. And Leticia, we thank you so much for joining us tonight, sharing your story. You. Right now, you can pre-order Leticia's new book, Love and Justice, A Journey of Empowerment, Activism, and Embracing Black Beauty. We thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.